Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Last time we were successfully able to introduce these green stopping blocks that uh, bring the, the projectile's run to a halt as soon as it collides with it. Um, and we had a little fun getting our projectiles over this very tall, very thin wall. And of course we're seeing which angles are able to make it over the wall. Um, I think that's the last one right there. What I'd like to do today is play around a little bit with the with, with basically with what this wall is shaped like, um, just so that we have a little bit uh, more versatile program for playing around with some different scenarios. So um, I'm going to be building that in front of you because I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. If not, this video will not see the light of day. Um, so I've got some pseudocode outlined here, just some instructions for what we're going to be doing. Um, so the first, so, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be defining a wall. We're going to be giving it um, a specified height, a specified width, a specified X location, and we're going to be uh, have we're going to have the bottom of the wall be at the, the 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 launch altitude. So let's start out with the wall height. Um, so the last one was at six, I think. Let's lower a little bit to five. Again, that's something we can play around with later. And the way we're going to set it up is that. We're going to use the variables we define here in our uh, creation of the list of stops. So that all you have to do is change uh, the block here, and you don't have to change anything about the actual uh, creation of the blocks down here. Um, so then we'll have a wall width. So the wall currently is pretty thin. It's got a width of 0 0.1. Uh, so that is not terribly wide. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's make it half a unit wide. Um, and then giving it an X coordinate, we're currently centered at zero. Let's, um, let, yeah, let's leave that at zero for right now. We can move that to the left and right uh, as we need to. And then I need the wall. So here's where I need to um, think about where I want the wall to be placed. So the wall uh, Y coordinate Remember, whenever we define the position vector down here, it's defining where the center of the block is. And so what I need to do here is to set the, uh, I need to set the, the center of it. So I need to offset it by the height of the wall or by half the height of the wall. So what I need to do is I need to have it be uh, launch underscore pause. Remember, that's the variable we're using to define where the projectile is launching from. That's a vector, so I'm interested in its Y component. And I need to add to that the wall height multiplied by a half. So in other words, it's going to be uh, that the center of this thing is gonna be defined by uh, our launch altitude plus half the wall height. Cool. And so uh, now I can start making this a little bit more versatile here. So I can have my, uh, let's think about our position here. That needs to be wall underscore X and wall underscore Y. I'm still going to leave the, the, the Z information static. Uh, we're not going to be interested in the Z direction going into and out of the screen just yet. Um, in another video or so, we're going to try out some more interesting 3D scenarios. So we'll be playing with that shortly. Um, let's see here. So for the size, then I need the wall width and I need wall height. <clears throat> and this 0 0.1 will be fine for the Z. Just give it a little bit of thickness uh, coming into and out of the screen. Okay. So let's take a look, see if that created what I think it was going to create. Okay, cool. So here's our wall. So, you know, we might be shooting cannonballs over a, over a barricade or, um, or we might be lobbing eggs at a house or something. It's just all sorts of mischievous stuff going on on Let's Code Physics today. Um, so our first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 shots do not make it. The next two clear it very well, right? So the, the thing that they have to worry about is the height. Once they make it over the height, they're pretty much going to make it past the wall. Um, yeah, so between these two, you can imagine that there's a projectile, there's an angle where it will stick right there onto the top of the wall. So if I wanted to see that happen, I could increase the width of the wall. 
So let's take a look here. This one, uh, this, this projectile uh, was able to clear it and that went one, two, three. So if I increase the width of my wall by, let's see if I want to increase it by, actually, yeah, I can increase the width of my wall by three and then have it centered at one and a half. Okay, so let's change wall X to be one and a half and let's increase the wall width by quite a bit. Let's make this one three. So this is maybe instead of shooting over an, uh, a, a building, we're, well, we're shooting over a wider building, basically. And let's see, we are lobbing our projectiles. So of course, these are the, the same ones are gonna stick to the side as stuck before. Oh, that one did not make it. Hmm. I thought that one would have, how did that clear? One, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, this is the one, right. Sorry, I got mine confused. Okay, so we have a couple sticking up to the top. So you can imagine if I made this even wider, I could get more to stick onto the top. So uh, if you think about it, this might be another scenario that you might be interested in would be to have the uh, projectiles hit the top of the of the structure, in which case you've got a narrow window of angles uh, for which it'll work. So you've got uh, some that fall too short, some that go too far, and you've got just a narrow window of angles that'll work. So let's see, so counting backwards, that's gonna be 90, 85, 80, so somewhere between 80 and 75, 70, 65 somewhere between 80 and 65 you're going to is, is going to be the magic angle to hit the the top of this structure here so that's pretty cool so another scenario that you might be interested in instead of making the projectile sail over a, a region you might try to get it into a region that's beneath the ground so say you're trying to fire uh, a projectile into a pit so in that case our wall is going to change into a pit so we would have the pit height, and I would need to find the pit width. Uh, let's keep those the same for right now. I like the I like the dimensions of that one over there, and we'll change this to a pit X. And now in this case, we need the pit uh, top to be at launch pause dot Y. So we need to be going below that. So we are going to change this into a minus <clears throat> pit height. Now another difference, and this is going to be the main difference, is that. A wall is a nice solid object like we had earlier. So I was able to just have one stop block, but a pit, we need to have be open. So I need to have a block on the left, a block on the right, and a block on the bottom. So I'm gonna be adding uh, several different stops here. Um, and so that's gonna require a little bit more uh, geometrical work. Um, so let's start with the, uh, let's start with the, Actually, let's start with the bottom edge. That'll probably be easiest um, to, to, to turn into math. Um, so let's see here. So I need this to be, the pit X should be fine because the, the, the bottom of the pit is gonna be centered at pit X and I need it to be located at pit Y. So this pit Y is going to be Let's see here, this is gonna be located uh, in the middle of the pit. So why don't we modify this to be pit center Y. Actually, we can call this one pit center X. And then I can have a pit bottom Y that's equal to pit center Y minus an additional half the pit height. Oh, actually, I guess I should call that pit depth. So, I mean, technically height and depth are the same thing. It's just a question of where you're standing. But, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I wanna make these codes as easy to understand as possible. And I'm even gonna spell the word depth correctly to help toward that end. So basically, this is gonna move us down one more um, half of the pit depth so that we're the, the full pit depth down. Pit depth down, pit depth down. That is that is difficult to say. Okay, so instead of pit X, this is going to be pit center X. We're gonna have pit uh, pit bottom Y. <clears throat> there we go. So that way we will be at the center and at the bottom. Um, cool. And our size, so this is now, we're not talking about the size of the pit anymore. We're talking about the size of the wall of the pit. 
So for the x coordinate, that needs to be the width of the pit. For the x size, that needs to be as wide as the pit is. That's going to be pit width. And then here, we just need it to be a nice thin line. Let's make it 0.1 like we've had before. So that should be a good bottom edge. Let's actually run this just to see if I've got any typos and make sure that this is appearing where I think it will be. And I do not see my pit. Oh, it's just farther down. It is far down. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. It's going to be as far down as the previous one was up. Okay, so that's fine. Wonderful. <clears throat> Alright, then let's make the right edge next. So I need to repeat this. I need list of stops. So that's the list that's storing all the stop information. This is our first time we've had more than one item in the list, so this will be uh, the list uh, paying for itself. Um, and so now I need to think about where this thing is going to be located. So this is going to be located at the pit right component. So let's think about uh, making a pit right x. So that's going to be kind of like what we have down here. That's going to be the pit center plus half the pit width. So in other words, if I'm at the center and I want to move over to the right edge, then all I need to do is add on half the width. And then I can do the same thing to get the left edge, left, just by subtracting the pit width. So I go an equal distance to the left as I went to the right, and I end up on the left edge instead of the right edge. So I'll have the pit right x. Um, it's y coordinate. Again, the position tells you where the center of the block is going to be. And so this needs to be the pit center x. And again, we'll have zero for the Z coordinate and then I need to specify this thing size so let's think about that this needs to be uh, pretty thin in the X direction so let's have that be a 0 0.1 and then its height needs to both be the full depth of the pit so we'll do pit underscore depth and then we'll have a 0 0.1 in the Z direction and I'm gonna close all my parentheses yay all right let's run a visual check on this uh, that is not where I wanted it to be. <clears throat> what did I do wrong there? Pit, center... Oh, oops, excuse me. That needs to be pit, center... Uh, excuse me, I copied and pasted one too many... Wait a minute, pit, center, X. Oh, that needs to be pit, center, Y. Excuse me. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so I've got my right edge... I've got my bottom of the pit, so now we can start falling in the pit. Uh, that only took five minutes to, uh, only took five minutes for Parks and Rec to come up. Um, so now that I've got that working, the beautiful thing is I can just copy and paste this to create the left edge, and it should be a pretty straightforward transformation. The left edge needs to have an x coordinate of pit left x. Pit center Y is fine, and the size, I want them to be the same size, so that should be good to go. All right, so now let's see which of our shots end up filling in the pit. Um, there we go, I've got that centered better now. Okay, so I've kind of got a, a happy coincidence here that these two straddle the pit, so if I want something to end up in the pit, I need it to be between, let's see, this is five... 10 and 15 so I need to go between 10 and 15 um, let's see if let's see and I believe they're symmetric across 45 degrees but let's double check to see if any of our high flyers end up in here um, so let's actually make a little note to ourselves so we need to go between 10 and 15 and between what's our other options this one just strikes the corner. I, I did not do that on purpose, but it's kind of cool that it worked out that way. Uh, oh, I had one. Oh, this one did not go in down into the pit. So I think I have a problem with my collision detection code. That, oh, oh. And now that I look at it, I see that this one did not land on the ground. This one struck the corner of the pit. Okay, I can I can understand that. But this one should have fallen down. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what I need to take out is... I think I still have in here... 
Yep, yep. Keep underscore going. Projectile pause dot y uh, greater than or equal to zero. Yep. So I'm not allowing it to fall into the pit because of that line of code. So let's take that out. Now the problem there is these that are supposed to strike the ground are going to continue falling. So let's do this. Let's add in a ground. So I'm going to have to add in ground. <clears throat> Uh, let's think of it this way. So I've got to add in a, a block, so I'm no longer having it stop at x equal to zero. So I'm going to have to create, hmm, I'm going to have to create ground all the way out that way. Okay, uh, let's do that this way. Let's say that we want a stop block with a position equal to uh, let's see, this is going out 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we need to go between 3 and 12. So that gives me a, uh, I need to go halfway between 3 and 12 is, uh, <clears throat> all right, we're going to do this on the calculator so that I don't embarrass myself. Halfway between 3 and 12 is... So it should be seven and a half, right? Three plus 12 equals 15. Yep, divided by two, seven and a half. Okay, always worth checking. So we can have an x coordinate of seven and a half, y of zero, z of zero. We're gonna give this thing a size of, uh, let's see here. I need to go from 7.5 all the way over to three. So that's a distance of 4.5, which will also get you to 12 on the other side. Wonderful, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 like before. And I'm going to make a little bit of change here. So, well, uh, you no, know, no, let's let's leave that in. Let's leave that in for right now. Um, so that'll get me to the to the right hand side. I need to do the same thing on the left hand side. And we need to go from zero to one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that'll put my center at two and a half, and I want my width to be two and a half. Wonderful. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to make this a negative zero point, uh, let's make it a zero, negative zero point two, just because uh, that way it won't uh, stop moving before it starts because it is intersecting with the ground there. Um, so let's have these go below just a little bit. We'll have that as our ground. Oh, what happened? Computer, are you there? Hello, computer. All right, let's try exiting. All right, uh, did I close off all my parentheses? I did. All right, F5. Oh, list of stop. Oh, it would help if I used the same name that I declared earlier. Wonderful. All right, so let's get this to work and then that'll be the uh, uh, wonderful. All right, position equals, oh, excuse me. This needs to be vector, doesn't it? Vector, vector, there we go. Okay, cool. That uh, that did not do what I wanted it to. Hmm. All right, I see what my mistake was. I forgot that this is zero, not this. So let's uh, adjust that over a little bit. Uh, so uh, I've already got the numbers figured out. So let's have this be minus launch uh, underscore pause dot x. And then same thing here. I forgot that my... Projectile is not launching at x equals zero. And now I just sent them the wrong way. Oh, that needs to be a plus. That needs to be a plus because it is a negative number. Plus and plus. Okay, almost. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna work on that off camera in between videos. Um, instead, I think the easiest thing to do is going to be um, Let's just change this condition to be greater than or equal to negative uh, well depth, or pit depth is what we're calling it. Yeah, I, I got myself confused in all the math and I'm, I'm approaching the maximum length for this video. So I think we'll just fix, we'll fix the ground another time. In the meantime, uh, we'll just set the minimum height, the, the minimum depth that it can go to be the pit depth. So that'll be helpful. That way they won't continue on forever. <clears throat> All 
Okay, cool. So yeah, so I do need to go between, uh, let's go back to my notes here. I need to go between 10 and 15 and between what and what. Um, so this was 5, 10, 15. Now let's see which ones that go higher uh, do I need to test between. So you see they're stopping at this height. I mean, really, they would stop here at the ground. And once I get the ground working, that will be, uh, that will be better. Uh, let's see probably increase the rate at this point too. Boom and boom. Interesting that I'm getting more that go higher. I guess that makes sense, right? Because these weren't able to clear uh, that spot, but I'm getting more that go higher than this. Um, okay, so that one hits the corner. And, oops, this one, oh, this one ends up in the bottom of the pit. That one definitely fell in the pit. Okay, cool. So I need to test between this value and this face. This was 90. This was 85. And so this was 80, 75. Cool. <clears throat> so what I will do then for our, we'll do a couple more runs. Uh, we're going to make our minimum angle, or our starting angle. Uh, let's go for the shallow ones first. We're going to go between 10 and 15. And we're going to make our delta angle, let's make it 0 0.5. So we'll get 10 um, uh, results. And let's go ahead and increase the... Where is the rate? There it is. Let's go ahead and increase that. A little bit. Let's make that 250. Um, another thing I'll do off camera is I'll add in a little print statement on the screen so that we can see which angles are launching. Okay, cool. So we're getting several falling technically into the pit. They're striking the far wall, but you know they're not making it down because they don't have the a good angle to get down into the pit. So these um, would bounce off the wall and into the pit. Um, I do want to do that in a future video. Add in a bouncing mechanism. Um, just so that these, uh, you know, we can see what would happen when they, when these, you know, the projectile interacts with the wall. Um, that wasn't terribly interesting. So let's go between 75 and 85. This should be a little more visually interesting. So we're going to go between 75 and 85. And of course, this is also all dependent on the initial speed. So I welcome you to download this code from the, uh, from the link in the description below and give it a try changing the speed and seeing how your um, angle distribution ends up being different. <clears throat> All right, cool. So we've got a few hitting the wall. Let's count how many are able to hit the bottom. So we got one that hits. We've got another that hits. Now oh, this is this is beautiful. This is going to be my next phone backdrop. Three, four, and so what this will give us an idea of is if you wanted to hit the bottom of the of the pit, um, you know, what range of angles you would need to use. Ooh, that one barely made it. So I'm guessing the next one is going to strike right there. Okay, cool. So you've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you've got three and a half degrees in which you can hit the bottom of the pit uh, with this launch speed. So that's pretty cool to know, um, you know, if you're ever you know, launching supplies down to the bottom of a well for somebody stuck in the well or something. Um, so this has been a lot of fun. I'm going to uh, dream up some more scenarios for us to test up in our next video. Um, I'd ultimately like to work our way to some sports scenarios like uh, making a field goal in American football or making a soccer goal in everybody else's football. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.